Hey everyone, welcome to a new video in finite element analysis using SOLIDWORKS. So in this video, we'll be discussing the basics of FEA and briefly looking on the various analysis system present in a SOLIDWORKS simulation module. So let's begin with the presentation. Finite element analysis is popularly abbreviated as FEA. So in this analysis method, we use finite element method to solve structural problems. Here, the whole model is discretized into small elements which consists of nodes on which the governing equations will be solved. Once uh, the governing equations are assembled for the whole model, several matrix solving techniques are employed to solve for the unknowns. So once we know the values for displacement, so we derive the stress and strain contour plots for the whole model. So the popularly used FEA packages are SOLIDWORKS, ANSYS and COMSOL. Apart from these uh, commercial packages, there are several open source FEA packages available like CodeAster and several others. You can even try them out to begin with. So now let's move on. So this is the stress strain plot for a material. For every model that we use in a finite element analysis, it is going to be made up of a material. So each material will have its own characteristics which is vital for a finite element analysis. To get this stress strain graph for a material, we perform tension tests on the material and plot the strain for the stress developed uh, due to the loads applied. Let's discuss uh, this graph in detail. So once we complete the experiments, we have the strain plotted in the X axis and the stress plotted along the Y axis. Let's rename the origin as O. As the load is increased, we plot the, uh, the corresponding strain along with the stress to get this stress strain graph. Once we get this stress strain graph, so we divide the curve into different regions depending upon how the material behaves. First, between the points O and A, the material tends to behave linearly. That is, the stress value is linearly proportional to the strain produced. Now, so within this region, if we unload the loads uh, that we have applied in, on the material, the model regains back to its original shape without any deformation. Hence, this region is called limit of proportionality and A is the elastic limit point. And within this region, the Hooke's law is valid. That is, stress is going to be linearly proportional to the strain produced. Once the material passes this elastic limit, it tends to move into a plastic uh, region where there is small deformations even after unloading the loads on the material. Now, as the plastic deformation sets in the material, the maximum value of stress and the minimum value of stress produced during the plastic deformation denote the upper and lower yield stress point of the material. If we increase the load even further, we reach a point called the ultimate stress point which gives the value of the maximum stress the material can withstand. As we pass this ultimate stress point, we end up in a rupture point which denotes the breakage or the failure of the material. So this is how the stress strain graph uh, is divided into several regions. Once we have plotted this graph, we derive other material properties like Ensign modulus and Poisson ratio to define the materials. You will be provided a reference material and a challenge to work on to refresh your concepts on the basic terms involved in a FEA problem. So let's move on with the presentation now. Static analysis. As the name suggests, simulation is going to be independent of time. That is, the loads applied are not dependent upon time. df by dt is going to be zero. Hence, we call it as a static analysis. And this static analysis is broadly classified into linear and non-linear analysis. So as the name suggests, there is a linear relation between the stress and strain in the linear analysis. While on the non-linear analysis, the relation is no longer linear. Secondly, in the linear analysis, the material obeys Hooke's law and the deformations are small. But on a non-linear analysis, the deformations are large and will not be proportional to the load applied. Finally, the material properties are assumed to be constant in a linear analysis and hence this type of analysis can be applied only within the elastic limit. But in a non-linear analysis, the material properties along with the non-linear relation is included so that after each iteration, the stiffness of the material is updated to capture the non-linear effects in the simulation. Since it is going to update the stiffness value for the material after each iteration, it is computationally heavier than the linear analysis. Now in SOLIDWORKS, if you perform a linear analysis on a model, you tend to assume that your uh, stress values are between O and A. And in case if you tend to increase the loads beyond this limit, your solver tends to follow a path which is unreal your stress value tends to uh, increase linearly even though th there is a realistic non-linear path available. Further, if the solver detects large plastic deformations in the model and you are performing a linear analysis, it will prompt 
whether you want to switch the analysis into non linear and if you agree to that the solver will convert the simulation into non linear simulation and proceed else it will take this path and give you the corresponding results let's move back to the presentation any fea problem involves three major steps the first one is pre processing the second is solving and the final part is the post processing so in the pre processing step we define the material properties for the model and then discretize the whole model into, into small elements so this process is called meshing after meshing the model we define the loads and constraints for the solver to proceed with the solution uh, in the solution process depending upon the type of analysis the solver employs different algorithm to solve for the unknowns and after the solution is done the derived quantities like stress strain are then calculated in the post processing we'll be looking at the different stress and strain contours that is produced after solving uh, the fea problem these plots will be used to to generate the report on the analysis done let's first talk about meshing so solidworks majorly uses two types of elements that is the triangular and the quadrilateral elements in a basic triangular elements we have three nodes and in a basic quadrilateral element we have four nodes now any model that we will be using for a finite element analysis will consist of intricate shapes and profiles that need are uh, captured even after discretizing them hence depending upon how complex your model is your mesh needs to be refined further uh, after performing any simulation to check the accuracy of the results we perform grid dependency test that is we run the same simulation by refining the mesh up to a point where the results do not change even after refining the mesh further so this is called the grid dependency test for any mesh refinement we have two methods that, that solidworks uh, provides us with one is called the h refinement and the other is called the pe refinement so in the h refinement we refine the mesh by including more elements into the model while in the p method we keep the number of elements as the same but we tend to increase the order of the elements that we are using in the model also in h method since we increase the number of elements we tend to decrease the characteristic length of each element in the p method the characteristic length remains the same while we increase the complexity of the shape functions that is included in the element look at a example on how a h refined and a p refined mesh should look like so here uh, in the figure number 1 we have the original mesh we have this rectangular geometry which is discretized so in the second we have a h refinement and in the third diagram we have the p refinement originally the mesh consists of six elements when it's h refined you can see the number of elements have been increased by a factor of 4 and this uh, factor can be user defined hence you can control the number of elements you, you want to include thus we you can see we have refined the mesh by increasing the number of elements using the h refinement mesh Finally in the p refinement even though the number of elements remain the same we have introduced mid side nodes to increase the degree of the element being used we end up using a higher order element to get a accurate results so thus we use p refinement to increase the order of the element used in our mesh now let's proceed with the presentation in fea depending upon our requirement we tend to reduce the computational power required to solve a problem using different types of analysis so depending upon our requirement fea analysis consists of 1d 2d and 3d analysis uh, first let's start with 1d so if your fea analysis consists of a model which has one of its dimension significantly larger than the other then we tend to go for a 1d analysis so if the model that you are going to use in your fea analysis has a dimension which is significantly larger than the other dimensions then we tend to go for a 1d analysis to obtain the required results for example let's uh, consider a long beam and i am interested in looking at the deformations caused uh, by bending since the beam is long enough a 1d analysis is sufficient to produce the required results a 1d elements are basically used to represent long members like beam and hence they help reduce the computational power required to solve the uh, problem now 2d elements that are basically referred to as shell elements and these shell elements are provided with a thickness to actually represent the model so these are predominantly used to uh, used when we have a thin sheets and shell structures in our model and um, further we can accurately derive bending stress on the part using this type of elements in the simulation helps in getting accurate results with a less computational effort than going for a 3d now finally the 3d once if you have obtained all the required result from 1d and 2d 
but still you want to understand the stress produced on the whole model you tend to go for a 3d uh, analysis which is computationally heavier we have solid to represent the models here finally after the simulation is done we look at the various stress and strain plots to infer our uh, findings from the simulation we'll be looking at uh, how to perform a 1d 2d and 3d simulation on a beam problem in the next video so now uh, let's move on SOLIDWORKS simulation uh, model consists of various analysis system specifically designed to solve different types of FEA problems. First one, we have the static uh, problem. Here as the name specifies, we, um, we assume the forces are independent of time and it helps us to calculate the stress strain, the displacement produced for applied load in the form of a point, surface or a thermal load. This is basically about the static module. Now in the fatigue, when you have a model which is going to be acted upon by a repeated load and you want to study the failure of the material due to such kind of a load, we use this fatigue model. From the fatigue analysis, we will be able to understand the behavior of our model under cyclic loads. In the frequency model, we will be able to analyze a model which is subject to a force and the body vibrates at a certain frequency. As we all know, every body has its uh, natural frequency and this natural frequency can be found out by using uh, this frequency module. From this type of uh, analysis, we can look at different mode shapes associated with the model. So in the buckling model, uh, apart from the failure due to the material strength, a lengthy member like a beam can fail due to axial instability. So such kind of analysis can be performed using the buckling model and uh, SOLIDWORKS helps us visualize failure of a model subjected to axial loads by calculating the multiplication factor to predict the failure. Here SOLIDWORKS plots the buckling load factor which will help us predict the failure uh, due to buckling. In the thermal module, we will be able to study the temperature gradients and temperature fluxes in the body due to loads like uh, conduction, convection and radiation. Next, in the optimization, Every finite element analysis is performed to obtain the optimum design. So for us, the optimum design may be the one with the least mass or the least stress. So depending upon our requirement, we can ask the solver to iterate between different values of the dimensions and arrive at the optimum uh, design parameters. This model will be uh, very useful in performing optimizations. Now, next we have pressure vessel design. So SOLIDWORKS has a special module which is customized for a pressure vessel design and this module helps you perform typical uh, analysis that is usually done on, uh, while designing a pressure vessel. Now to the vibration part, here uh, the loads are specified as power spectral density uh, functions. Don't worry if you are uh, unfamiliar with this term, you will be provided with the proper materials and uh, references to know more about them. Right now, uh, just understand that there is a module which is going to help you analyze uh, the vibrations present in a model and look at the stresses that are developed on a long period. Finally, we have the drop test. So as the name suggests, if you want to look at the stress strain on a model when, when it's dropped, we go for this module. Here the solver uses explicit time integration to plot the stress and the strain contours at the time of impact. Here we initialize the simulation by providing an initial velocity and uh, adding the gravity to the physics that is uh, included in the solver. So I hope that this lecture gave you a brief idea about what FEA is about and how SOLIDWORKS has different modules to help us perform uh, various analysis on our model. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.